Hi everyone, it's Valor from Online Combat Battalion with another Armour 3 Editor tutorial for you. Uh, I've had a few questions about ending missions. So you've got a series of tasks and you want a final task or a final um, uh, object or player present to end the mission. So we'll go into some ways that you can do that. So let's get right into it. So I've got a playable unit here and I'm going to place down, I'm going to go to F5, Intel, Create task, then I'm going to grab a set task state, and I'm going to go up to the triggers or the F3 key, and I'm going to place down a trigger. So what we're going to do is have a move task. So double left click the create task module and go to select all playable units as the owner. Task ID, I'm just going to put T1 and title of the task is move and move so this task will end the mission now i want to have a trigger to end the mission so that when any player is present in the trigger it will end the mission so let's go into the trigger and i'm going to select any player present and in the on activation section i'm just going to simply put end mission and then in inverted commas end one and then semicolon. So when any player is present in this trigger on the on activation section end mission, it will end the mission. So I'm going to have a look at the task, make sure that's set as created. Then I'm going to right click on the set task state, actually left click on the set task state. I'm going to set that to succeeded, then right click connect sync to the task, then right click on the trigger, connect sync to the set task state. So we will have a task pop up, that's a move task and the marker is within the trigger area. And once we complete that task, the mission should end so let's see how that works so in the mission let's have a look at the task list by pressing j for juliet on the keyboard we've got a move task i'm going to assign that and then when i move into that uh, task area there or the where the mission task is i'll trick the uh trip the trigger and there you go the mission is completed Another way we can end a mission, and it's probably the simplest way to do it, is I've still got the task uh, module down there with all playable units as the task owner and assigned as the default task. And we're going to put that there. And we're using the same trigger, however, this time I've taken out the on activation section. So if you'll remember, I had uh, end mission in inverted commas end one semicolon uh, that's been taken out because if we're using the end scenario module we don't need that command which is this the, it's the simplest way to do this the trigger is still set to any player present task is there and all we do is right click on this connect sync to and then sync it to the trigger and that will end the mission when we enter the trigger area you'll see it will look a little bit different to the other ending uh, that we used the first time. So for this you'll see that the task is automatically assigned and we're going to walk forward into the trigger area and it will end the mission. And you can see it looks a little bit different to the other ending. Okay so now for a little bit of uh, context on how you could possibly use this in a mission. Uh, I'll show you a few different ways. Firstly, uh, I've got um, what I've done is I've placed a task which is uh, where is it? There we go. All playable units rescue the captive and rescue this dude, and I've set it as assigned. Um, then I've got the end scenario which we're using in this tutorial and synced to a trigger. Now, in the trigger, you'll see that I've set the activation type as civilian not present. Okay, and nothing else needs to be messed with there. The only thing I've changed down the bottom is the timer. So I've put a 20 second timer um, on the 
civilian not being present. So this guy's obviously a civilian. So when he is not within this trigger area, the end mission module will fire. Now to get this guy to join my group so I can actually move him out of the trigger, what I've done is I've given him, giving him a variable name of hostage. And in this trigger here, I've set to any player present. And in the on activation section, I've put hostage join player and semicolon. So when the playable unit or a player, any player, enters that trigger, he will, the civilian will join the group of this player. And because we're going to then run out of this trigger, I'm going to take him out. The civilian not present will fire this trigger, which will fire the end scenario. So I'll show you how that works. So we're in the mission. We've got the task assigned to rescue this dude. So we're going to enter the trigger and we're going to go up and rescue him. Two, join group. And you can see he's already joined my group because that uh, trigger has fired for him to join my group. And then we're going to get out of here. And once he leaves that trigger, there'll be a delay of 20 seconds or so. And we can simulate that we're running away because we've rescued him and the mission is completed. Another use for, or another way to end a mission and to use the end scenario module. So just place some guys here and I've set a team leader in the middle. He's sort of like the boss. And we want to end the mission when this guy is no longer standing. So I've once again got the end scenario uh, module here. And in the trigger, now we don't need to size this trigger at all because it doesn't depend on anything being present or not present in the trigger. Inside the trigger, I've got it as activation or type and activation as none. And I've set exclamation mark alive, John and semicolon. And I've also set a delay of five seconds. For this to work, I've given this team leader the variable name of John. So when John is no longer standing, this trigger will fire and the scenario will end. I've got a task here of take out the high ranking officer, assassinate general, set to all playable units and assigned so that task will be automatically assigned to us. And I'm just gonna put that there so it doesn't get in the way of my view. And once we take John out, the mission will end. So here we are, we've got the uh, bad guys over there and we've got the officer in the middle with the very name, variable name of John. John's down. and mission completed. Another example of when you can use the uh, end scenario module is when your troops have been picked up uh, by an AI helicopter. So what I've done is I've placed a uh, little bird out here. Uh, I've given it some waypoints. First waypoint is a move waypoint. And here to try to slow things down a little so that the aircraft doesn't come in too hot and overshoot, I've set it as limited speed. And you can, if you like, if you've got AI in the area, enemy AI in the area, set the behavior to careless so that they'll just do exactly what it is that you tell them to do and they won't worry about any enemy. So first one's a move waypoint. Next waypoint is a land waypoint. Now, if you've got any helipads in the area, it's best to put the land waypoint right in the middle of the helipad because AI pilots will always look for a helipad. So if I was to have the landing waypoint over here or over here somewhere, they would ignore that and they would land on the helipad. So the next waypoint I have is a hold waypoint. So they'll hold there for a particular period of time. 
And this trigger here, I've set it as skip waypoint, activation none. But what I do have is S1 in area, this trigger. And I've given myself the variable name of S1. So when S1 is in this trigger area, it will uh, bypass or skip the waypoint. Because you'll see it's set as type skip waypoint um, after the trigger is activated. And let me have a look at the delay I've put in this. Okay, I've got a delay of 20 seconds. Let me put that to 10 seconds for each. And I've also given the helicopter from the hold waypoint a another waypoint out here, a move waypoint, and it doesn't really matter what happens be, uh, after that waypoint because we're ending the mission. What I've done here is I've put a very large uh, trigger here, you can see, and you can edit the trigger size simply by changing these numbers here. Um, C will always mean it goes from the ground um, way up into the sky, and I've given it a 200 meter uh, width and a depth of only 10 meters. And all I've done with this is set um, any player present. So when any human player, and I've got a timer cool down there of uh, 10, I'll just change that to five. So when any player is present in that trigger, because the helicopter is going to fly through that trigger, it's synced to the end scenario module and it will complete the mission for us. So let's see how that works. So the helicopter's coming. I'll speed up time a little bit, to save us all some time. And because they're AI pilots, they'll realize they have a, uh, a land waypoint and they'll get weird and fly up in the air and spin around like idiots. Because that's just what they do. So we have not yet entered that waypoint, but remember I'm playing as variable name S1. So S1 is now present in that trigger. I'm gonna jump on board and we'll wait for the timer to tick down so that the skip waypoint works. And then we go, we're up in the air and we're flying now through the second trigger, which is to end the mission, which only has a five second timer on it and there we go mission completed. so that is that's an explanation of how to end your mission using both a code and the end scenario module i tend to just use the end scenario module in my missions because it's just easy it's already there uh, you can actually set this to mission completed or mission failed so if there's a particular thing that you're supposed to achieve that you don't achieve by a certain location or a certain trigger that you reach, you can have a mission uh, failed um, trigger as well. Um, if you've got any questions on any of this, hit me up in the comment section below. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and I'll see you in the next video.